One of the most asked questions I get on YouTube would have to be people asking me to tell them the cause of their hamster's sudden death. I actually received this comment so much that I've had to create a pre-written response so that I can just copy and paste it to people. While I am flattered that people think I'm capable of providing them with that answer, not even a vet would be able to tell you that without a necropsy. A necropsy is a dissection of an animal that has died to determine the cause of death, and even then, sometimes the results can be inconclusive. Depending on where you live, you may not have access to a vet who does necropsies, they may be expensive, or you may just not want your pet to be dissected. Hamsters are rodents and rodents are prey animals. Therefore, they are capable of hiding illnesses and diseases very well. Unless you're paying very close attention to your hamster, they may not even show signs of illness until it's too late. So that's why it's important to do regular health checkups as well as monitor their weight. A hamster's death, of course, may be caused by environmental factors or incorrect husbandry, but a factor that many may not consider is their genetics and how they were bred. You've most likely heard about puppy and kitten mills, but did you know that this happens with all species of animals? When you walk into a chain pet store, any of the animals that you look at likely originated from a mill. These mills are big warehouses that breed hamsters and other animals with very little care. Hamsters are kept in these overcrowded small bin rack systems with soiled bedding, and the hamsters are often starved enough that they will end up cannibalizing each other. They will take any female without knowing her genetics or history, and they will breed her and breed her and breed her until she is no longer useful to them, and then they will dispose of her. These hamsters are very nutritionally deficient, which is why you'll often notice that a pet store hamster tends to be smaller than an ethically bred hamster. A big portion of these hamsters will die before they even make it to the pet store. When you breed an animal without knowing its genetics and history, you are risking passing down genetic conditions such as things like neurological issues, tumors, cardiomyopathy, etc. And a mother who is nutritionally deficient may cause the pups to not grow properly, causing defects, and some of these defects may not be physically noticeable. While there are many genetic conditions that you physically can see, such as eyeless whites, which is a Syrian hamster who is born all white and without eyes, and as well as being deaf. There also is hydrocephalus hamsters, which are hamsters that are born with water on the brain, giving them a much different look than your average Syrian hamster. There are many internal genetic conditions that you're not going to physically see. So while you may pick what seemingly is the most healthiest hamster in the pet store, you really have no clue what is going on internally. Did all of their organs develop properly? Are they missing some of their organs internally? You really have no clue because you can't see inside of them. A good example of this is when I adopted my rabbit, Cleo. When she went in to be spayed, the vet actually had said that her uterus was so abnormally small that it was about the size of a rat's uterus. I would have never known that because I can't see inside of her. So it isn't a shock to me when a pet store hamster suddenly dies without showing any signs of illness because unfortunately they were not bred with care and did not get a good chance at life. Okay, but how are these mills legal and why don't they get shut down? Well, for dogs and cats, they really aren't, and many get shut down every single year. But when it comes to exotic animals, that's a different story. These animals do not have the same welfare laws as cats and dogs, and unfortunately, these mills will often get away with the treatment of these animals. So, what can you do? If you're looking to get a healthy hamster, your best option is to find an ethical hamster breeder. These are breeders whose first priority is the hamster's health and improving the species rather than just trying to produce as many hamsters as they can to make a profit. It may be difficult to find an ethical breeder because not everybody is ethical. And just because somebody calls themselves ethical does not necessarily make them ethical. I will leave a list in the description bar of some of the ethical breeders that I know of. 
Hearing about the abuse of hamsters at pet stores may encourage people to go out and buy a hamster to give it a better chance at life. And while this is a very kind thing to do, I would encourage people to not support the buying of pets at pet stores. Purchasing a pet from a pet store is just supporting the store and helping them to continue producing more animals. You buy a hamster and they just breed another to replace the one that you've bought and the cycle just continues. This also doesn't mean that I'm saying pet store hamsters don't deserve a good life. They obviously do, but this is what needs to be done in order to put mills out of business. So to help stop animal mills, look into adopting from rescues or look for an ethical breeder. Hopefully this video was able to help shed some light on if you've recently just had a hamster suddenly pass. Unfortunately, this is a pretty common occurrence for most of us. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.